In the next few modules, we will take a look at the major network functional architectures. But first, let us get an overview of the different types of functional architectures that exist in practice today. Logically speaking, we could group the major functional architectures into two groups. What are they? First is the peer-to-peer -peer network architecture that is the simplest form of functional architecture. We talk about peer-to-peer -peer network architecture. Then of course we have the client-server type of network architecture that is the more advanced version of the functional architecture and incidentally the second one here is the one that's used very frequently and extensively in the business world. Each of these two architectures have different implementations as well. In the case of peer-to-peer -peer network implementation, we will take a look at two different types of implementations. One is a network or a peer-to-peer -peer network that is implemented using a less secure operating system such as Windows 95 or 98 and we will also take a look at the functional features of a peer-to-peer -peer network that is implemented using a more secure operating system such as for example the Windows 2000 professional or the Windows XP operating system. Incidentally, we can set up peer-to-peer -peer networks using any of these operating systems. In the case of the client-server operating functional architecture, we also have different types of implementations. What are they? The first one that we would come across, the simplest form of the client-server architecture is known as the file-server architecture. Then comes the application-server architecture that is sometimes called the true client-server technology implementation. And finally, the third type of implementation under client-server architecture is known as the thin client architecture. In the case of Microsoft, we call this the terminal services. And again, in the case of a file server architecture, we can have implementations that differ in complexity. First, of course, we could have a file server implementation that focuses on a local network. So we talk about a local implementation of the file server architecture. On the other hand, we can also have file server implementations that are much more sophisticated. Uh, for example, uh, in this case, they can be globally oriented. A good example would be the implementation of the Active Directory structure in the case of the Windows 2003 server operating system. So these are some of the functional architectures under the second type of implementation or the second type of network functional architecture that is the client server architecture. In that again we will look at the file server. There are two variations of the file server implementation. We will look at the application server and of course we will look at the thin client implementation as well. When we look at the different types of implementations under client-server functional architecture, we will study the following factors to get a better understanding of the different architectures. What are these factors? First, we will look at the point of execution of applications. For example, we will look and see whether an application is entirely executed on the client or is it entirely executed at the server or is it executed as a combination in both places? That's the first question we would answer. We would then look at the network traffic. What is the implication of the different implementations 
in terms of the network traffic. Third, we will look at the total cost of ownership for the different application architectures. And finally, we will also take a look at the control and security features that apply to the different functional architectures. So we are talking about security and control. These are some of the factors that we would use for understanding the different types of client-server functional implementations. This brings us to an end to this discussion on the different functional architectures of a network. In the next few modules, we will look at each of these functional architectures with respect to the factors that we have outlined on this page.